Good morning guys, welcome back Automotive Inc. We finally got the truck back from Ford. We got the initial problems fixed. So I have seen a lot of people out there wondering about the factory OEM puck system. So guys, don't be fretting. If you have a 17 to 22, so the last generation of Super Duty, I do believe this procedure will be identical. However, I will put links down below because I installed this exact same thing on a 22 Super Duty, the general that we had on the channel. Now that actually is like a six step video um, broken down into this is going to be a consolidated one I will also put links down below to have you guys uh, uh, be able to find all the tools that you need to do it now I do and will tell you that the system itself uh, is about eleven hundred dollars and if you have Ford install it tack on about another grand and a half and so if you can do it yourself um, you're gonna save a lot of cash now even buying the tools I have the same tools that I bought last time they did a great job they've lasted I could reuse them and I'll be able to reuse them multiple times but again I will go step by step here and I will tell you exactly what you need and I think you can get out with the purchase of the system of about 1100 bucks I think uh, but don't forget if you have Ford Pass rewards if you bought a new truck you should have points you can apply back towards that no I don't get sponsored by them but it is your money you already spent and got points for so make sure that you you use it so this will work on a 23 and 24 and again I do believe it'll work on previous generations so let's go over and take a look at the kit all right guys the kit itself has almost the identical part number that it did last time however they have added this a uh, and don't one X is just one kit I do believe uh, but that is going to be your Ford part number I will also link that number down below uh, again I don't get any affiliate or anything like that but uh, if it helps you, that's good. I also printed out my old instructions because the last kit that I got did not have the instructions to add the seven pin. Now in the previous kit for my 22, it did not come with a four pin. It only came with the seven. So if you need to have a four pin some for some reason in your bed for a camper shell or something, uh, you can just buy an adapter. But I will link this because this is kind of a tedious little process, but it does come with the actual diagram template so you can actually get the exact location of where that seven pin goes okay opening up the box this does look a little bit different than the 22 just the way they set it up in the box the last one i got was just kind of a smaller box and everything like that so inside here we do have our packing instructions uh, stuff we're going to have all of our parts and pieces now the hardest part and heaviest part to this is going to get this cross member in there yourself now i will tell you guys you can do this yourself i did build a contraption on the ceiling of my garage it's going to take a little bit more time but it also doesn't put pressure on the sides of the bed because i've, I've seen where some guys are picking up on the side of the box this box is aluminum um, and you pick it up wrong it could bend it so um, I would just be very very careful with that but my contraption like I said I made it from some Harbor Freight D-rings I always have chains boomers tensioners cable tensioners and straps so it made it super easy but we have to get to the bottom and the nitty-gritty starting point which is drilling these holes so taking a look inside here guys again it, the kit does come with the seven pin all the plug and play harness stuff um, and then you have all of your your little plastic rings you have your hardware you have your brackets um, as of right now I haven't seen an instruction manual in here so that may be the pickle if I don't find one at the bottom of all this foaming crap then I will put a link down below because all of those are accessible through a website that Ford has there are technical instructions on how to do everything so instead of an instruction manual we get a little piece of paper buried at the bottom of the box that basically is a location and a qr code so you can just bring up the instructions and print them now i would highly suggest you do print them and then that way you can actually nail them down now when it comes to this you guys might be saying well why wouldn't i just buy a bmw or a single turnover ball or adapter well what this system allows you to do is it gives you a gooseneck and it gives you four cam locations for a adapter or say a companion hitch from BMW. Now, the reason why I like this system over a BMW is 
I put fender liners in there and the handle for a BMW is typically on one of the sides and I will tell you after having BMWs on multiple vehicles, the more crap that's underneath the truck that's going to get full of garbage, dust, road debris, salt, eventually it kind of gets sticky, it kind of gets hard. Now if you do do a, do a BMW ball, that system's probably right around seven, eight hundred dollars so you're almost at the point and then you still have to use only that point location as attachment if you're going to do a fifth wheel so you still have to buy that expensive BMW hitch. I have a, an adapter that works on the Chevy and the Ford. All you got to do is just kind of twist the, the brackets and bolt them back together. So it's it's from Reese. It's very inexpensive. It allows you to use any standard fifth wheel hitch that uses above bed rails. So I like the factory system. It looks good. It fits good. It functions in multiple different ways. It gives you both fifth wheel and gooseneck attachments and then when you don't need that stuff you can pop it out slap the cap down and it kind of basically just disappears it adds tons of value to your vehicle and i would just highly suggest it because it mounts up super easy there are no mechanical things underneath the truck that will eventually stop working or moving parts it is a very simple heavy duty bracket system and i would just highly suggest this over uh, a turnover ball system that you still have to do lifting the bed up and everything like that so first things first we need to locate the actual locations where the holes need to be now that i'm 10 feet in the air in the box guys i'm going to show you the locations of the pinpoints where we're going to start with a pilot hole now I will forewarn you, if you have an aftermarket spray and liner, sometimes those are super thick. The Ford one is super thick and super hard, and sometimes you can't see those dimples. So I'm gonna show you measurements on where you can start, okay guys? All right, if we're looking forward at the front of the bed, guys, we can see right here, here's a little dimple. Now it is very small, so if you do have a bed liner, that might have disappeared. You're gonna have one here for the center hole and the remaining four holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just for baseline is going to do a measurement to give you guys a location where to start. You can kind of see it comes off this rib here uh, on this one. This one's kind of self-explanatory. It's kind of right in the middle, but even if these holes need to be exact um, for everything to line up. So what we'll do is, is I'm gonna take a measurement and I'm gonna show you that measurement because what you can do is come in here with a chisel and just kind of scrape away and then you'll have access to that um, hole. Now, for me, because I don't have a bed liner yet and I'm going to have one, this is the perfect time to do it because we're gonna scratch this stuff up and everything like that, and then when they come in and spray, it'll seal that edge. So let's take some measurements. All right, guys, as you can see, we're right about from the front of the bed itself, we are right about 30 and a half inches from there. On the second hole, we are at 43 and a half. And what you can do is just take a, uh, like a soap pencil or something to mark that, a gray Sharpie, anything that'll kind of just kind of set you up to mark those holes. Now, those holes are gonna be identical on the right side of the bed. So if we look back over here, you can take the exact same measurement, they're going to be even. Okay, now let's take a measurement from the side of the bed here. All right, from the fender itself, we can see we're right about 10 and a quarter. And then we'll move this over here and we are at 10 and a quarter, so that is going to be identical on this side of the bed also. And then again, you can see on the center hole, we're basically at 36 and a half on that big hole. Now, by giving you guys those measurements, again, if you have a bed liner or you can't see those dimples, then uh, this gives you the ability to measure that off. Again, just get like a wood chisel and just kind of tap through that. Now, don't point it straight down. You know, you're gonna have to kind of like slice it like you're whittling a stick. Clear that away, it'll clear up that that uh, little dimple will show up and then you're golden. Uh, but if you don't wanna do that, don't have access to a chisel, then you can just actually um, measure it out like that and you'll be golden. Now you're probably thinking, guys, now that that's this video is already eight minutes long. Well, great things have to come with a price, guys. And if you wanna install this yourself, again, this video is gonna be more than wealth worth it. And I have tons of other content, tons of other accessory installs. So while we're at this point in the video, make sure you hit the, the subscribe button at the vid, end of the video, give me a thumbs up because I don't think there's a lot of people out there that are putting out content like this. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but uh, I like to add my own swagger. So. Just make sure you do that for me, and then if you hit the notification bell, you'll know when we're doing new stuff with the new Tremor. So now what we'll do is we're going to get the instruction street through the QR code, and then we're going to start drilling some holes. All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going again to link every tool you're going to need. If you don't have the ability to print the instruction seats, guys, 
just follow these things to a T, take notes, and you'll be good to go. So now the kit is going to come with uh, three different hole saw bits for metal. Make sure they're for metal, not wood. They are sharper than I'll get out, so I would probably wear gloves. Uh, you will need a drill, a cordless drill or a corded drill for this, at least a 3 8 drive. Um, so that way it can handle the uh, arbor that goes into these hole saws. Now, these outer holes, the ones for the smaller pucks are three inches. So we'll set that bad boy aside. And then the big guy is four and a quarter. Now, again, you can see it comes with the arbor and the starting drill bit as part of it. And this set, again, We'll do wood, no problem, and it'll last you a long time. So what I like to do, guys, is I'm going to get my drill. I'm going to get a smaller drill bit, say hmm, an eighth inch or so or smaller, and just drill myself a pilot hole. So what I mean by pilot hole is that way it makes it easier for this bigger drill bit to start the hole, and then we're going to cut it. So I'm going to show you a pilot hole. All right, guys, so when you are drilling, make sure you look underneath your bed real quick just to make sure. Now, if you have a diesel or gas, it's irrelevant, but always make sure that somebody at Ford didn't leave a wire loom sticking underneath this. And then as you drill your pilot holes, make sure you just use light pressure. So that way when you get done, you don't shove the drill bit all the way down into something that you didn't mean to. So now I've started holes there and here. And so now that we've done that, I've got the arbor set up for the larger hole saw and it makes a lot of noise. So I'm not gonna cut that out while we do that. But the same uh, principle does apply as you drill through it, go nice and slow. So one, you keep the drill uh, in control, but that way once this pops through, the piece of metal will probably fall all the way through, but you don't want to shove this down into something because this hole's big enough, the drill could almost go all the way through and whatever else underneath there, we don't want to mess up. Woo, and make sure your neighbors like it because cutting these holes makes an ass ton of noise. All right, let's take a look how this looks. So you can kind of see through here, guys, all the metal shavings, we'll vacuum all that up because we don't want that getting anybody's toes later when they're walking through the garage. Here is the piece that cut out. And again, we'll deburr this with a file um, just to take off this little lip right here. Now this, all of these shavings are sharp as hell, so don't brush them with your hand. Uh, get a vacuum, shop back, whatever. Um, don't just blow them out into your driveway because your kids aren't gonna like these in their feet. Um, Aluminum is just as sharp as steel, just a little bit softer. So you can see right there, we can throw this away. And again, because we are doing a bed liner later, we don't need to use any type of rust inhibitor. But if you guys are concerned about this and you already have a bed liner in, you can get one of those paint pens. You can uh, put some silicone on there, whatever you want to inhibit it. Again, aluminum tends to corrode, not rust. Um, so that is possible, but we got the first hole out. And again, this, all this debris is sharp. These are super sharp. And when this gets into the metal guys uh, and you start cutting that hole, it does put some kicks. So make sure you have your hands on that drill um, so that way it doesn't swing around and hit you. But now we're gonna cut out the remaining holes. We're gonna do pilot holes. And that pilot hole helps so this larger drill bit doesn't skip off that little, that little point. So that way it just kind of gives you a nice line up and set up for your hole. So we're gonna drill the rest of these holes and I'll show you what that looks like. All right guys, so we have all of the holes drilled. Now I wanna show you a couple things. Uh, one, this is a file. People call this an all or a file. Um, and what you can do is use either one of these. I've had these forever, but I'll put a link down to a couple cheapos to basically deburr the edges of these holes. Now, I'm gonna use my vacuum to get down there on top of the axle, clean that up. We have lots of metal shavings underneath it, but you can see right here, we're real close to the shock. This is where I want you to be very careful when you put the hole saw through. Just go slow, get it through. Don't take the hole saw in and out of the pilot hole um, because that may mess up your alignment here. So just be committed to it, but go nice. You'll see when it starts cutting through, you'll see the shadow of the ground underneath it. Um, nothing here, obviously, we've already vacuumed off the top of the pumpkin. Uh, here, we actually have a wire harness, but really right here, you can see how close this wire harness is. So that's really not gonna affect us when we put the hitch itself in, because you can push it aside. Um, but you do not want to get into that with your hole saw. So this is a shrouding, of course, it's wrap, but the wiring is really close underneath it. So then we take the file and we basically work our way around it. Again, I don't have a bed liner yet, so we just took off most of the burrs, so it's not 
if you run your hand through there, it's going to cut it, but it's not that sharp anymore. I'm going to get those cleaned up a little bit more, but once we have the bed liner on there, then we're good. But you can see how there's debris on top of the frame. We're going to try and get all that out with a vacuum. But this is where, uh, this is probably the most tedious part of it because this is where we actually can, you know, if you go through it the whole saw, you can damage something. So just go nice and slow. Again, guys, if you don't want to print the instructions and then go along with this video, uh, you can just take notes. Um, once you get done with this, um, then we're basically on to cleaning this up and then we'll get to where we need to take the bed itself off, the tailgate off. Um, whether or not you choose to drop the spare tires up to you um, But again all of the tools that you need will be in the description below and I will tell you exactly what they are as we do them Now if you don't have a corded drill or drill at all in your arsenal of tools ladies and gentlemen I highly suggest that it's still worth it to even buy a cheap one and have it burn up in one use Than it is to go to Ford to do this and you might be thinking geez Jeremy this already looks like It's a hard job to do it's really not uh, with the system I've made to lift the bed up um, I do this job myself and I can even get the heavy cross member in there myself but if you have a friend or a neighbor that uh, works for a beer or cookies or pie you can have them come over and help you set that one piece in here but now that we've got the holes drilled we're gonna get this cleaned up we'll get the bed uh, the truck flipped around into the garage and I'll start hoisting it up and we'll get the system in it's really not that hard guys uh, and gals it's it's uh it's actually very, very simple to do. Um, just take your time. It's going to take you about three hours by yourself to do all of this work and do it right. But again, it saves you a lot of money. All right, guys, now we got everything cleaned up. We need to remove the tailgate. So first things first, before you, uh, this is the, one of the next heaviest parts because if you have the bed step, the tailgate is a slightly heavier. It's not a manageable, it probably weighs 60 pounds we need to get underneath and remove or sorry unclip this wire harness it runs through this hole and then down underneath the actual bed this is for your camera your tailgate light and everything like that and then if you don't know how to remove your tailgate uh, I will walk you through that but it's basically there's a groove on the back side sorry right on this one right here this is the main part where it's gonna come out um, and then this side we're gonna tip it up this way but we're gonna disconnect those so again if you're a little bit hesitant on this one you can ask for help I've removed a bunch of tailgates um, but let's get underneath and see where we need to unplug all right guys it'll get unblurry you can see where it runs down here it's not clipped anywhere but right here so we'll squeeze it out of there we're gonna come down here and then we're gonna need to unplug it um, from these harnesses right here and then it will slide out um, pretty easy again with the push pull connectors and then we'll uh, we'll slide the tailgate out so depending on your trim level and how much crap only you have in your truck this one has about five or six connectors that we needed to pull uh, and disconnect they all are gonna be super easy you don't need to map them they only plug into one area but as you can see it was this one this one this one and this little bitty guy up here again they all have these little push type tabs so push the connector into itself first push down it'll pop right out the sooner you can do this or the cleaner it is underneath here the easier those connectors are going to come apart but you won't need to unwrap any tape or anything like that to disconnect it but you will have to feed them slowly through that hole so let's get up there and start working on the tailgate removal so from here again, guys, we got to pull them through this hole. The hole's not big enough to pull all of them through at one time, so you're going to need to do that. You won't need to disconnect this connector or pull anything out of the tailgate itself. So now let's uh, pull the tailgate loose. All right, so we've already removed one side of that, guys. Now for this, really, if you just get a small flat blade, kind of pull down on the connector. Um, I'm doing it one-handed. I don't have a filming crew. Once you get this tab above it, that little flat ring itself will... Uh, slide over the bigger hole um, and remove that all right from there guys again you can kind of see as we turn the tailgate up that little piece right there that's where it's going to start to slide out um, now with the box when you set this set it on its side set it on its bottom uh, just put something on the floor beneath it that way if it does slide it doesn't slide on the concrete and jack up your edges here um, so now we will tilt this up and then pull the wiring out of the hole. Now if it's the first time you removed your tailgate, it is uh, stuck on this side pretty good. 
but you can set the base of the tailgate there and then just start pulling these back through the hole. When you get up to where they're coming out, um, you'll have to pull a few out one at a time and then they'll all come out. So that's what's going to look like when it comes out. Again, I pulled the smaller ones out first. Don't yank on them. We don't want the connectors to have any damage. Once they got these out, then the big one was next and the last big one. Tailgate's removed. We're going to set it aside now. When you put them back in, it's going to be the same. You'll start with one of the big ones. You know, you can see that the deeper ones need to go in first. Pop those in there, slide those through, and then you'll be golden. Now, I know it might seem a little cringy to cut holes in your brand new rig and stuff, but if you have four do it, they're going to be doing the exact same thing. But everything's looking good so far, guys. Tailgate's off. Now we're going to get the truck spun around and uh, work on getting the bed off. All right, guys, I have the truck in the garage. I built the system a while ago, so you can see I bridged over two uh, of the... Uh, the trusses here and uh, those d-rings hold uh, i think 2,000 pounds a piece i got them lag bolted in to the ceiling this system worked um, otherwise next part of the step can take up to four people and four people that meaning they can lift this bed that's already tall up high enough to put it on wood blocks and then once you have it on wood blocks it kind of puts you in a unique situation meaning those blocks can slide, can move, and whatnot, but that's what the instructions are going to show. But I just basically made a hoist in my garage to do that, and I'm going to use the four points of the bed attachments uh, that are in the corners to lift it up. That way I don't have to worry about bending anything. It, it holds it very still. It takes it up just enough that I need it. So that's how we're going to get the bed off. Next step is we got to remove the area inside. We have to detach the fuel um, cap and everything like that. So let's take a look. So inside of here, if you have a diesel, you're going to have a, a def cap here. You're going to remove those two caps, just let them hang or set them aside. Now this little cover gives us access to the bolts. And if you guys know, I've put this tool in here a dozen times in my videos. This is a trim piece removal tool. It has a great angle for getting in there because this piece is attached down to two points in here. And so what I did is I just kind of set this down in there and I kind of just pushed against it. Not a lot of pressure. We need those two tabs to basically come off. Once we get those to come loose, um, there is a little snap point in here um, and then a little rubber ring that goes around that. So now we can take this trim piece, set it aside wherever you won't step on it. Now, if you're gonna get in here pry with a screwdriver, don't break these tabs off. Otherwise, this little cover is just gonna flop around in here. It is just for pretty, but it is what it is. So we need now to remove these three and these three. Luckily, well, unfortunately, they're not all the same size. So we're gonna get a extension and a socket and we're gonna remove those. Now I will put a link in the description to a very inexpensive tool set that you probably should have in your garage if you're turning your own wrenches. As I said before guys, I'm gonna tell you every size and everything that you need. You're going to need an eight millimeter for the larger gas. So these three right here. Now if you're a dropsy daisy kind of person, you can put a rag in here. Do not use paper towel, but that'll prevent you from dropping one of those down that tube. Uh, for your fuel tank. Um, don't use paper towel because that can tear or fall off in there. We don't want to introduce anything bad into our tank. The smaller three right here are going to actually be a 5.5 millimeter focus there, baby. All right, so once we get those all removed, these will basically fall back through the hole, if you will. They'll kind of just come loose when the bed goes up. Might be thinking, well, I don't have uh, a diesel, so I don't need to remove that smaller one. Yes, you do, because Ford actually has a tube running from that cap for a DEF tank. So um, that way they can just make all of these universal and stamp them and cut them and do all of that to make it simpler on them. So you do have to do it. If you don't believe me, take a peek up underneath there. You'll see the black tube running down from there. So we do need to disconnect both of those. So now we got those disconnected. You can see that this one is loose. This one has a little plastic flange here. So we'll just push that down with a flat blade screwdriver and pop that back through that hole. So we are good there. All right, guys, now the instructions say they remove the spare tire just for illustration purposes. However, unless you've got tiny little hands and arms to reach the wire harnesses we need to attach besides the tailgate harnesses, then I'm going to highly suggest you go ahead and drop your spare tire and get it the hell out of the way. Now, leave that thing off until we get done with the wiring harnesses for the seven pin also. Um, that's going to be included in this video. Again, this video is long because I made several different part series and some people were getting confused about steps and the way I labeled them and I don't know. But nonetheless, 
go ahead and drop that spare tire. Now we need to get underneath the truck and this is where a shop light or those rechargeable lights that I have shown you guys before work great because you can just kind of clip them. Don't forget to take them out though before you uh, drive down the road because I see them all over the road all the time. So let's go underneath the truck. I'm going to show you the left hand and the right hand wiring harnesses you need to remove. All right guys, you can see we have this big orange wire harness running out. We're going to need to connect that, disconnect that big harness this one with the red switch and the left hand side we need to detach the seven pin and we need to pop loose those clips up at the top around this back side if we can get some light over there that now this is where we're going to use my handy dandy tool again to pull the Christmas trees loose on different areas that body Christmas trees are but just body fasteners but really we just need to disconnect those wire harnesses because we're going to lift up. Now if you see a connector like this, you're typically going to push this little clip down that holds this in and what that is, that's actually going to basically unfeed that. Now there's not a lot of room here so to get this harness out so if you want to use the body fastener remover tool and pop that tree loose in the back, you can do that for removal. Alright again, all of these connectors guys are going to have a um, push-pull type connector. Now the seven pin one here has this great clip. You need to slide that back with a screwdriver. Once you get this little bitty clip right there back, then you can push this down and pop that loose. From there, um, that's all you're going to need to disconnect. This is the big guy right here. Again, we don't want to pull on wiring as we're lifting it. And you get, might get confused. You'll see all these little things running around and through the bed. But really, in all reality, this right-hand connector is not connected to the bed. It's connected to the frame. So once you get done with that, and as you lift it up, you'll want to know. And this is why my system works a little bit better because you can crank it up, get underneath and look. Or if you have a fifth person, then you can kind of, um, you know, get a better just for that. So now that we got all of those disconnected, now we can actually remove the bed bolts. All right, guys. So now I have my chains and my straps hooked up. This is how I lift the bed by myself. Now what I have done is put some painter tape on the edges, although last time I did it without that. Um, just to protect it as the bed comes up. You only need to really raise it about six inches, so not a big deal. So now I have a chain tensioner, what I call as a come along, uh, hooked to my ceiling right there. Um, and then what I do is I drape towels in between the bed and the glass. Again, it's going to come up a little bit and kind of shift forward, uh, so that's not a big deal. Now the next tool you're going to need is a Torx S Plus 24. It can be a half inch drive, it can be a 3 8 drive. This exact bolt is the Torx E Plus. So if you just get a 24 Torx, it will not fit and it will not work. Now this is one that's heavy duty so you can use an impact gun on it. Um, I will put a link to this. I bought this a few years ago to do a brake job on my fifth wheel. Uh, it is a cheapo, cheapo off of Amazon. I've never even charged the batteries more than once. So I charged them both up and this thing keeps going. Um, and we're going to get in and we're going to take the six, sorry, eight bolts out. There are six along the bed and two at the front. That's going to allow us to lift the bed complete. Now I don't have any real tension on this. So you can see the chains just flopped around up in there. Um, we won't put any lift tension on it until we get the bolts loose. Um, the bolts will only line back up in the holes in which they were and if you line all of this stuff back up with the paint you'll have it right back where it was initially so you don't have to worry about alignment of the bed or anything if you will so now we're going to take my impact gun you can use an air ratchet you can use elbow grease and a standard uh, socket wrench and get these bolts out but we're going to make quick work of this now it does say and provide you with new ones of these if you have a bed liner you will need to cut around these washers to remove the bolt so it doesn't tear it away um, but most likely you will lose the bed liner covering that's on the top of those because the Torx E plus is going to have to go on there so you might have to get that off uh, to do it which isn't a big deal these are just the top of the bolts the bed's still protected uh, but we're going to go ahead and remove these eight bolts real quick as you see, I've got them all done. It took a less than 10 seconds. Last time I used uh, elbow grease and they are so long winded that uh, you'll be cranking all day. So good tool for that. 
um, and good parameters again. They don't come out damaged, but they do say they're one use, so you can reuse them. Just make sure they're torqued down or put the new ones in and make sure they're damn tight. So once we get that off, we are ready to lift the bed. Now guys, we got the bed lifted up. If we zoom in over here, you can see those little white cones on that side and right over here in the front. Those are basically gonna be locating tabs for the bed when it comes back down. Um, so you'll wanna make sure that those are lined up. So we got this up, we can see our holes here. Um, where everything goes, you can see the one wire loom hanging. That's why we had to detach that from the frame. Before I put the brackets on here, I'm going to wipe this bad boy down and then we will start mounting up that with the hardware. All right, guys. So from here, we have the two holes. We have a bracket that's identical. So this one, you really can't screw up. There's two of these in the kit orientation doesn't matter as much. Now, we are on the driver's side, left side, whatever you want to see. This is the front, this is the back. The bracket here that goes on the inside is the one that has the three holes on the back. So you'll have to make sure on this one, these aren't stamped any differently, but you'll be able to see that this goes from there. Now, you're going to use two of the 106 millimeter. So they just give you a bag of parts, they tell you how many's in it, but there's four of each of everything. So <clears throat> if you're skeptical, you can measure it, make sure it's 106. Then you're gonna use the largest, biggest flange. You won't need to use thread tight on there. These are nylon locking, so you'll be fine there. And what's gonna happen is, you're gonna put these on the back side of this bracket. What happens is, is this uses the tension as it tightens up against itself that's how it tightens so you won't have to reach around and do that um, so you'll be good there just make sure when you put it there's nothing on the back side that can get crimped or cut from you tightening these so we're going to get these started it is a little bit of a pickle um, getting these started you usually can put the one bolt in one side hook at the bracket the bracket will lean on all the wiring and stuff there for a second as we get these things tightened down <clears throat> now once you get them nice and torqued, you're good. Once you're good and tight, you're good. Um, there are no torque spedding, specs certain in the, the uh, actual instruction manual. Um, but if I see some, I will tell you what they are. Again, um, I'll get, tell you what the size of this is here in a minute, but you won't need anything on the back of it. Um, but we're going to get both these brackets installed, remembering that this three bolts goes towards the back, and you'll be good from there. All right, guys, now they're going to give you two of these little cone things. Don't forget that they're in there. These are locating tabs. They're going to go on the rear piece of the bracket, so watch this. So now we're on the pasture side. You can see that we have the three holes on the back, towards the back. We have the three holes over there. I got the one locating pin in there. It's going to go on this inside little piece. This is what's going to help line it. Now, these are only slightly tightened up. They're not tight, tight. They don't want you to tighten anything until you're done. So these 103 millimeter or 106 those are actually going to be a 22 millimeter now the large wing nut with the nylon in it you're going to put them on here as you start cranking they're only going to tighten because they're pushing against the metal on both sides so really the orientation isn't really that big of a deal because they're going to swing around to where they catch and that's what's going to create the pressure so don't forget these two tabs. When I first did this, again, I had the bad instructions um, and I was trying to figure out how to locate everything because it had all these extra elongated holes so it was trying to slide around. So don't forget this piece. Now we're ready to set the cross member inside uh, up here. Now this is the heaviest part, guys. The biggest concern is, is getting it in there and not having it fall down on that wire loom um, along with those um, brake lines, hydraulic lines, whatever the hell they are. Um, so this is where you can use some help if you had to, but it is tied in here. I can do it myself. I've done it myself. I'm gonna do it again myself. So you're gonna come over here. And obviously this is the top, guys. Um, uh, sorry, this is the bottom. After I had a brain fart, again, this is the top. So these pieces that are raised here are gonna go up. Now it does say that this hole is offset. If you look at it by the naked eye, you might be able to tell it, um, but you can see right here that this is about 
uh, nine and a half inches to the center of the hole, and this is only about seven and a half. So the short side goes towards the front of the cab, guys. So um, this is where the locating pins that we put in, they're gonna line up with one of these holes. I don't remember exactly which one it is. Um, but remember that the shorter side goes towards the front of the cab because once you get it in there, uh, the first time you'll understand how heavy it is and why you don't want to take it out and turn it around because you'd have to slide it all the way back out and then slide it back in. So short side goes towards the front of the cab. Let's slide her in. So what I do guys is I basically slide this on top of the passenger side tire. I get underneath the vehicle, lay underneath here, and I just kind of slide it until it reaches over there. You can see if you over tighten these and this isn't laying flat on here, this should lay it flat, especially with the the uh, positioning tabs, those little cones. That's why you don't want these over tightened. Once you get it in here, there isn't a whole lot of room for it really to move around. Um, probably a quarter inch, which isn't a big deal. Um, but once you get in there lined up on both sides, that's when we can start installing some of the rest of the hardware. The torque specs, I will tell you here in a little bit for each bolt. Again, I couldn't remember off the top of my head. I, I figured there had to be some. They're further down in the instructions. But again, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need. Again, on these ones right here, these outside ones, you're going to need a 22 millimeter. So again, don't over tighten. Now let's go around and line up the rest of the hardware. All right, so we're gonna install the rest of the hardware and I'll get down to what you're gonna to use to tighten each one of those. First of all, let's take a look here. Okay, so we have the washer and bolt with these smaller flange hooks. These are gonna go on the outside to so get those started. You're gonna have a, a 50 millimeter length uh, bolt that is actually this bad boy. And it's gonna go with these weenie type fasteners. There are gonna be two of those, one here and one on this hole. So get them all started, guys, and then repeat the procedure on the other, other side. Get them all started before you actually do that. So again, washer bolt, kind of like a beveled looking flange here, 50 millimeter shorter bolt, those big long ones we already used here, and start those with the shorter wing fastener there. Repeat on the same side, and we'll see you in a second. All right, so we got all the hardware started on all sides. You can kind of see how it's kind of loose in here. Everything's still basically floppy. Now we're gonna basically start tightening down this in, in a sequence here. And um, so now that we have everything basically loosely attached, guys, I'm gonna explain how you have to tighten them. Everything's loose. Um, and the, the instructions spe specify that you do this in a certain order. Okay, they consider this bolt the cross member Torx. Okay, we're gonna tighten this one first. It's going to 173 foot pounds. The second one is the upper. Obviously, this is the lower cross member. This is the upper cross member. This is going to 110. And you can kind of see that these retainers are a little bit less, so they can they're gonna handle less torque. Then the last thing we're gonna torque is the left hand, right hand brackets. These bad boys are going to 184 foot pounds of torque. So you're gonna need a torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, um, you probably should head down to the, your local Harbor Freight and snag one, or I'll put a link down below to do it. Um, and I will tell you what sizes these all are. So these are gonna be 22 millimeter, 22 millimeter, 18 millimeter. So you're gonna to torque these down. You shouldn't have to worry too much, guys, about where this is shifted. With, as long as you put those cones in, those alignment tabs, if you put those in wrong, um, not a lot of these other holes are elongated or anything for you to adjust. So it's going to be lined up. You shouldn't have to worry about that. If you are worried about it, you can kind of look at both sides, take measurements and whatnot, but this should suffice. So we're gonna start tightening these down and torquing them down. All right, guys, so I am dripping with sweat. Tightening down all these long-winded turds is bad. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, when you're running a uh, uh, torque wrench and it clicks and it's done and it slips off, if you have mechanics gloves, wear those sons of bitches because uh, I split my thumb all the way down to the bone. Always fun. Um, also, probably should wear some safety glasses just in case your torque wrench decides to pop loose or your actual socket. But... Now, when it says you torque these down in order, guys, that means all four of those matching bolts. So the lower torques, these four need to be done first, okay? After you do that to those torque specs, which I stated before, 
you're gonna come here and do all four of these. So this one, this one, and go over to the other side and so forth. Then you're gonna come back and do the lowers to the torque spec. Now, while I was installing this, I could see that this little plastic vacuum line, whatever it is, um, metal and plastic over time don't like rubbing together. So I have a little piece of foam um, sticky stuff. It's gonna stick really well to this because it's new. It's just gonna act as a buffer between that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in. So while you're doing this, guys, if you see something, it's like, huh, I wonder if that's not gonna be good over time, uh, address it. Um, cause sometimes they have a recall, like they'll put this plate in, then I'll have a recall later cause that's rubbing against it. And their fix is basically to rub some shrouding around it or some tape or put something like that around it. So just save yourself the hassle. If you see it, fix it while you're in here. Um, saves you a trip to the dealership, saves you a headache later, maybe a breakdown or what might be. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no zip ties with this kit or anything like that. Nothing that requires it. Now this breather tube right here, we did need to move that up while we were tightening things down. But now that it's done, we can just stick it back down. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and do that and then it's time to set the bed down. Now depending on your truck guys, your bed, low counting mounting tab, mine are on both on that side. It doesn't really matter, they set the lineup ones there. If we pan over here, there's one over there in that corner. It's just a yellow plastic cone. The ones that went on the hitch are steel because again, if you do that all in sequence, you're not gonna have a misalignment or anything like that. Um, and so everything looks good. We are going to lower the bed now. All right guys, so we've lowered down the bed now. Everything's copacetic. All the lines uh, match up. Um, again, it's kind of like a game if you're gonna use this type of system. Go down a couple clicks at a time, make sure it's all looking good. So far the holes, everything looks great in here. Um, everything's lined up as to be expected. I didn't anticipate anything else being crazy um, when it comes to that. Alignment tabs are good. You can always look down these holes, make sure uh, everything looks up. Now I would go ahead and start all of these bolts before you uh, tighten them all down get them all tightened we got them all lined up if you will um, the tensions basically off the bed keep in mind until you get the bolts in there don't put a ton of weight on this side because um, it could tip up but usually your body weight if you step in a foot you're gonna be golden all right guys the bed bolts need to be torqued down to 129 foot pounds now I will tell you this is gonna be a knuckle buster because that torques is hard to keep on that um, the actual bed bolt so put your mechanics gloves on and uh, put some knee pads on and just prepare yourself. Get those torqued down to 129. Now, before we put the tailgate and stuff on, we're gonna go over and reinstall the fuel filler cap and that def tube that's actually on gas models. So you're gonna reach up behind here and just shove them around here. Again, don't drop them down this hole. If again, if you want to put a rag, no paper towel, no anything that can actually tear off or fall down the hole. So get this started get these ones started you're just going to pull them up through there so now we're going to tighten those down again those don't have to be they need to be tight no torque specs on those again the bigger ones are 8 mil smaller ones are 5.5 so go ahead and tighten these bad boys down all right we got that tightened down before you put on your gas cap you can see that it has the little snap things on this side so you can go ahead and fit those in those two little grooves there to start push it down you need, need to use a little bit of force here a little bit of push push you'll hear it snap in now that piece is done and so far the actual bed uh, kit is done now we're going to do the wiring for the seven pin so i will preface this guys again we're going to need some hole saw stuff and we're going to talk about everything that you need to do that um, because this piece was done in so long um, I'm going to cut the video off here and for the guys that just want to do the seven pin because they're doing a BMW there will be a, this will be on a separate video or I guess a part two and I will link it in this video um, so just keep that in mind guys um, we're gonna keep going on this video but guys that don't come to this video we're gonna have a separate video in regards to installing the seven pin 
All right, guys, continuing on. So if you are continuing on with this video from the fifth wheel tow prep package install, guys, the only thing I haven't installed is the plastic rings. I'm getting my bed sprayed, then I will install them. Uh, I don't want them to take them out. These are really not made to come out multiple, multiple times, but these are the rings to make it look pretty and the little caps to put in there to not fill debris when you're not using your hitch. But we are going to start now with the seven pin. The seven pin is pretty easy. I will go through every step, tell you everything that you need. So if you don't want to print out the instructions, which I will put a link down in the description, because when you buy this kit, you get a QR code inside and you're supposed to scan it on how to do it. Um, now this says 17 and up because although it says 23 on their website, when you print it out, it is the same exact instructions. So you will not get this template and by gosh, you sure do need it. So first things first, we need to this edge off with a pair of scissors. You're gonna need some painter's tape for it. And then we're gonna get going. Now you will have a link down below to do these uh, instructions, but if you don't want to, you can stop, pause, and do this with just this video, guys. All right, once you trim it, guys, you can see right here, it says bed to floor seam here, tailgate corner seam, which is right there. So we can see where our center of our holes are going to be in the taps. Now this is mainly and only um, to diagram that you're going to need a two and an eighth hole saw, which I will put a link down in the description to a great cheap set that will last you through many, many of the jobs past this. And then four 11 30 seconds drill bit holes that we're going to need to drill. So what you're going to need is one of these handy dandy starters. Find the center of the hole. And what that's going to do, it's going to mark it just like they did on the, on the floor. And that shit is loud. So I'm gonna pause this and we're gonna do the other two. After you punch those little starting points, this is where we can stop, uh, take the diagram off, and then we can actually drill our holes. So we will set up our hole saw. Now, if you don't have a 11 30 seconds drill bit, 5 16 will work. Now, I will tell you this, guys drilling these pilot holes with a smaller bit. Uh, you don't have to worry about overextension to the outside of the bed. If you're using a longer bit, like the 5 16 was, make sure you use a little bit of push-pull, like you're pushing lightly, go slow, because you don't want to go through it and hit the outside of the bed and dimple the outside of the bed. Same thing with the hole saw thing. You don't want to uh, have an uh, overextension of that, and because you can see that the drill itself with the hole saw will fit all the way through that hole, and you do not want to dimple the outside of the bed. So just go slow, kind of on the trigger, off the trigger, on the trigger, off the trigger, go through there. Um, we're going to deburr this again with the file, clean it up. And because this is going to be, uh, they're going to pull this off anyway. Um, I'm not going to worry about finishing that because they're going to pull that off to do the bed liner. So they're going to actually spray in there and it's going to be good. So from there, guys, it's going to be pretty, pretty simple. These little bad boys are going to give you four of them. You're going to clip them around the hole and that's how that's going to go in there. You're going to do the same thing four times. They'll clip in those holes. Okay. So now I'm going to put the other two in. Then from there, you're going to need to climb underneath there and shove it up under. Now, if you are continuing on with your puck install video, um, then you'll already have the spare tire out. You will probably need to drop it to access the wiring where we're gonna plug this in. But what we're now going to do is plug this bad boy into that, and then we're going to use this. We'll grab a small socket wrench and get this turned to, uh, to actually attach that to this. Now underneath it guys, there is a tree that's already attached to the new wiring that's gonna go in that small hole right here. This um, oval shaped one's gonna go in this upper hole here. And then this is gonna go up and over the frame rail there. Again, you're gonna wanna remove your spare tire if you're just doing the seven pin install. Now, once we have the wire kind of attached down there, like I told you guys, I will tell you, this is a seven millimeter. So I got my small socket here. We are going to get this now uh, bolted up tight. All right, guys, this is plastic. Don't over tighten those seven mils. Get them snug and get them good. Now, if you guys notice, I actually forgot to put on my cool little surround. So we're going to take that back off. Don't forget that step, guys. Otherwise, you kind of look like you missed a step, which I did. 
All right, voila, now it's on, guys, we're good there. When you clean up the metal shavings, like I've warned you before, they are sharp, they are pokey, do not brush them up with your hand. Get your shop back out. Guys, if you don't have a shop back, I'll put a link down below to a super cheap one. I've had it before, I, I've, I actually gave it away because uh, I upgraded my vacuum at some point. Um, but it's a cheap one, you gotta have a wet dry vac in your garage uh, to clean out your car, suck up metal shavings. Now we're ready to get underneath the truck. All right guys, so once we get underneath the truck again, this harness needs to go on the opposite side. Over here, we're gonna put it over the back side of that. All right, next, the harness we just installed on the truck, um, it needs to be plugged in to the back of the seven pin on the truck. The one that's from the truck that we already disconnected right here, that one is going to be plugged in to this other one. So, see the long shiny one goes into the one from the truck. The new one from our um, exterior seven pin up in the bed is gonna clip here. Now when you do clip this one back together, make sure you clip it and then snap this plastic ring down for the full fit. All right guys, from there they give you plenty of zip ties. You're gonna stick up the extra up in the back of there. And that is the install of your seven pin. Um, so that's the end of that guys. And I have the tailgate off. self explanatory how to take the spare out so you can do that if you wanna clip these off, which I will here in a minute. That is all you need to do for your 7-pin. So guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you on the next one. And guys that are doing the wrap-up on the puck install, let's keep on trucking. All right, guys, so we're keeping on going from we just wrapped up putting in the 7-pin. Now that we're underneath here, before we put the stair, spare tire back up, we are going to reattach our wire harness. So again, it's pretty much self-explanatory. The Christmas trees will go back in the same holes in which they came. So let's get that buttoned up. All right, so those are gonna go back over. Once you start pushing this in, this will start flipping back over. Once you shove it in all the way, you'll be able to just easily snap it back down in there. This one goes here. And once we're there, we put the switch back and pull it back and lock it so it can't be unplugged. From there, guys, now all we have left is to reinstall the spare tire and reinstall the tailgate. Guys, if you remember right, to put in the tailgate is the opposite steps what we did before. We're going to set it down here. We're going to feed the bigger connectors through first. We're going to get those down in there. Feed the last little three. They're all going to plug into the only place they can plug into. So you don't have to worry about screwing that up. You're going to stick the round in into this side first and then drop it into there once you get all that done. Um, other than that, once you get it plugged in, everything that uh, inside the cameras and everything are going to come back on and work. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to install those caps last uh, on this video once I get the bed uh, sprayed. So we're going to get this sprayed, get the tailgate on, and then snap the rings in, and that's the install, guys.